the Las Vegas Raiders find themselves in a really precarious position going two and three now. And honestly, the quarterback situation, it doesn't look good. And that's why I think the Raiders are about to make not one, but two genius moves with an eye on the future. So let me ask you this before we get too far into this video. What is your hope? What is your best case scenario for the Las Vegas Raiders this year? year you can give me a record you can give me a thing playoffs afc west whatever it looks like because right now it looks like everything is pointing to third or fourth in the west it's pointing to no playoffs and it's kind of coming around to two very very simple things they can't stop the pass and they can't pass and that makes it very very difficult so where are you at with this and here's the deal if you don't know who we are we are lions fans but we talk a ton about the raiders we have multiple teams that we talk about none of these massive market teams um the teams that the national media tends to ignore more we those are the teams we cover on this channel because we love football but our hope is to give you a non-biased view and I am going to tell you in this video why the Raiders, the future outlook is very, very bright. Even if right now it doesn't look good sitting at two and three. All right, so here's kind of what we want to look at. First, let's look at the quarterback situation. All right, the QB job is up in limbo again. Antonio Pierce has not been a guy who has a lot of patience. I think we know that. Aiden O'Connell got to come into the game after Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew threw his second interception. I think at this point, what you're hoping to get out of your quarterback is someone who will make the right throws, but also just not turn the ball over. Sure, Gardner Minshew absolutely can make plays. I said at the beginning of the year um, in the preseason after watching a couple games, I'm like, Gardner Minshew's the guy. He makes more off-platform plays. He can get some stuff done with his feet. I'm not saying he's like a mobile quarterback, but he's a decent improviser. But as the season goes on, it is not going well. It's not going well for him. He's doing a lot of things. He started the game off really, really well. All right? Brock Bowers makes a great play on a floated ball from Minshew, turns it into almost a 60-yard touchdown. Everything is good. And then Minshew rolled left, threw too high for Bowers at the goal line, and it was intercepted in return for a touchdown, and that was the beginning of the end. He ended up, he completed his, he, he completed eight passes for 150, 15 yards and a touchdown before that pick six, and after that, just 22 yards, and Aiden O'Connell came in. So here's the thing that we have to realize, and I want to give you some stats on this. We knew going into this year that this quarterback room wasn't what it was going to be in the future. Was there a hope that maybe Aiden O'Connell could be the future? Yeah, there was a small hope of that. But we knew this quarterback room, for all intents and purposes, was not going to be the future. I think you're in the same position you were in last year. Just make the decision earlier. Go to Aiden O'Connell. See fully what you have in him. Does he have the ability to be a starter in this league? Is he just a good backup? And if he is a good backup, you have a good backup. Congratulations. I think he's at least that. But then the question is, what are you going to do about the quarterback room? And I'm going to give you two different things. And here's the two genius moves they're about to make. Number one, I think Gardner Minshew's done. I think Aiden O'Connell becomes the starting quarterback. Please don't be musical chairs, though. When you go to O'Connell, just stick. Gardner Minshew has shown, I'm not good enough to win with, just go to Aiden O'Connell. If that means your season goes down the toilet and you end up going 5-12, and 12, fine. Because then you have some quarterbacks that you can absolutely look at. All right? Um, this, is, this is a pretty good site when you look at who are the best quarterbacks coming out of the draft. And it's up to you, right? Who do you like? That's a question. Do you like Shadur Sanders out of Colorado? Now, you might have to get the whole circus that comes with his dad, all right? But at the same time, kind of cool. Are you a Jalen Milrow guy? I, I, I'd i be all in on him. I, I would be all in on him. Do you want to reunite uh, Brock Bowers with his college quarterback and Carson Beck? I have my doubts on Beck, but when put in the right system with the we right weapons around him, it could be good. Cam Ward. All right, Quinn Ewers, all of these guys, those top five, and then I would even put Jackson Dart in there, um, I think would be better quarterbacks than what your current situation is. That's move number one is new quarterback. Move number two, you're going to trade Devontae Adams. If your team can't win now, you're going to let him go next year anyway. Why am I saying this? If you don't know this about me, I am a salary cap guy. All right, 
I am a salary cap guy. Right now, the Raiders have $26 million in cap this year. All right? Now, they had a couple of big contracts that they put out in the offseason, but they still managed to have plenty of money available. Here's the big thing. When we are looking down the line, when we are looking into next year, we have to say, how much do the Raiders have available? They have, going into the offseason, as of now, the fifth most cap room in the NFL. What that means is that they can take a leap and go for a quarterback if they want to. So if they don't want to get a quarterback in the draft, if they don't want to leave it up to that, there are some other quarterbacks that they could go ahead and get. I'm talking about guys who are going to need a new contract, like Sam Darnold, who's playing for the Minnesota Vikings and playing really, really well. What about Russell Wilson? Him or Justin Fields. One of them is going to be available. The Steelers aren't going to keep both of them. All right, what about, I know this sounds nuts, Bryce Young, Deshaun Watson, Will Levis. There's a lot of quarterbacks that could be playing quarterback musical chairs, and you could get your um, your hands on some of them. Now, I don't think the Raiders with their current coaching regime and staff are the place that a quarterback goes to get right. That's what the Vikings are doing with Sam Darnold right now. You go there to get right, but you never know what that looks like. There's going to be a lot that you're going to find out from this year. Here's the point. Get a second round pick, then you can have even more ammo right, to possibly move up if you need to to get the quarterback that you want. There are multiple quarterbacks. I don't think they're going to grade out quite as highly. Obviously not as Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels. I think those two are kind of in kind of a, an arc of their own. But the other quarterbacks, the Shadur Sanders, um, Carson Beck, Jalen Milrow, they're going to grade out just as good as a guy like Drake May did last year. They are, as J.J. McCarthy did last year, as Bo Nix, as Michael Penix, they're going to bring different things, right? If you're worried about trying to get this offense in motion and trying to get it going, Jalen Milrow is a guy that is just stupid athletic. Look, what you're doing, what the Raiders have done that was such a smart move that nobody understood yet was they gave themselves roster and cap flexibility going into next year. If they decide to go rookie QB route, they have $80 million that they are able. And by the way, that's including the $44 million to Devontae Adams. That will not happen. They're going to have an additional almost $30 million on that. They're going to have $110 million to build around a rookie quarterback, a phenomenal roster. Think about what the Bears did in this offseason. They're at 3-2 and two right now. They have a phenomenal roster, other than the offensive line, which makes no sense, that they have built around Caleb Williams so that Caleb Williams, when he's come in and has not looked good, the team can still be successful. I think you have the ability to do that with a rookie quarterback. The question is, what is your team now, and will Antonio Pierce survive the season in order to do it? Will it be a one-and-done for him, or will he continue and they'll let him be the guy that runs the ship going forward? I think they are going to make two good moves coming up before the trade deadline. I think they are going to bench um, Gardner Minshew and, and, looks, and get a look at the younger quarterback in Aiden O'Connell. I think that will result in some more losses probably. And I think that they're going to find a way to get the Devontae Adams trade done because they realize their timelines simply don't add up. Those are the good moves to put themselves in position to be very good in years going forward. We've seen teams be able to win with rookie quarterbacks. The NFL is starting to figure out how to do it. I think the Raiders can absolutely be one of those teams. See ya.